It's a little late. It's kind of windy here. Feels good though. Okay, here we go. October 12th. A man should not strive to eliminate his complexes, but to get into accord with them. They are legitimately what directs his conduct in the world. Sigmund Freud, 1856 to 1939. It is tempting to take the promises and steps literally, thinking that we are going to be free of our baggage, never tripping over our foibles again. We don't turn our wills over never to have selfish or self-destructive behavior rear its ugly head again. We become entirely ready to have these character defects removed, yet we don't have that new car smell from that moment forward. Will the first time we feel financial security mark the end of money troubles? Can we mark the end of doubt in our lives as the first time we intuitively know how to handle situations that used to baffle us? The steps in chapter five of the big book were an anecdotal account of a process taken by a group of drunks. They don't claim to be scientific. The first time a promise buckles under pressure, we may feel ripped off. The steps offer sobriety, not Shangri-La. We can be satisfied that although our complexes won't be eliminated, we will understand them and identify how they work in our lives. We don't eliminate defects of character. Rather, we get into accord with our idiosyncrasies and grow more and more mindful and responsible for our conduct. From the book of Freud to the book on recovery, progress, not perfection, is our credo. New unmanageability or substitute addictions may signal that we aren't in accord with our complexes. Common substitutes in recovery are workaholism, internet addiction, extreme exercising, an insatiable spiritual search, sex, and fantasy preoccupation, and comfort eating. Substitute addictions stunt our growth in that they tend to come with renewed rituals of shame, denial, and obsession. I am learning to accept myself as imperfect, aren't I? I don't actually expect that I can pull out the rotten bits of me, like pruning a plant, do I? Yeah, um, Eliminating defects of character and idiosyncrasies. The idiosyncrasies I've had probably, well, you, you had traumas, trauma, right? Traumas kind of, com they compound, I think, the idiosyncrasies, trauma. Trauma compounds it. And recovery, I mean, I think I have a lot on my plate and I I can be a little harsh with myself I don't sometimes know how to handle the feelings that come with dealing with people that I used to know that were that are Jehovah's Witnesses so those feelings can bring up a lot of obsession. It starts a whole new, it starts a whole new ritual of, of irritation. So shame, denial, and obsession. Yeah. Shame because I didn't say something. Shame because I wasn't quick enough. Um, I think just accepting where I am right now in time. You know, I can be angry one day and super happy the next. Um, when I see carts, when I see people that I knew behind the carts, it can throw me into a, a whole different spiral of 
feelings. Why couldn't I said this? Why didn't I say that? What reaction should I have had? Or I think it's the same with anyone who is dealing with some sort of uh, the complexities of what trauma gives you, right? The complexities of it all. So it, with when it comes to what having addictions, it's hard. Um, the feelings that come up. So, or well, I shouldn't have taken that drink. I shouldn't have gone down to the bar. I shouldn't have sat with that person. I shouldn't have smelled that whatever because then that made me go back to wanting to drink again. I, I know my dad suffered a lot with, uh, I mean, he would, he would go to, well, he would go to gatherings, right? For, um, that Jehovah's Witnesses would have and then they would have alcohol right off the bat and he would just smell it and it seemed like it was going to throw him back into a, a binge so yeah I think I get a lot of feelings when I read this right and when I read it, I read it for the first time with you just to see where my feelings are what or where I am right today was hard I saw people at the carts yesterday I know the backgrounds of these people and they know mine too right I was a pretty good kid as a Jehovah's Witness I in fact I was really good I was really good and a good daughter I, I know I was a good daughter um yeah and people know you know about my my past and my family my dad's suicide and it's so funny because seeing them and I did say hi you know I said oh hi you know and I worked with one woman who watched everything that I did they knew where you know the people that I was working with some of the men would always be asking me out and I wouldn't you know I wouldn't go out with them and they kind of all talked to each other to make sure that I wasn't going out or you know hanging out with worldly people worldly people so I got to see that it's but it is I have to say traumatizing because it throws you back and I as a witness you stay in these little congregations and you encapsulate yourself and you think that people are watching everything you're doing and sometimes they they are they are watching everything you do but they don't necessarily care. They just want to make sure that you're not doing anything wrong, which is none of their business. So yeah, it's really strange. It's really strange, especially when they, you know, act like they so love you when you're in the Kingdom Hall, but they can't remember your last name. That happened to me too with a, a friend that I grew up around and called me from Hawaii and he couldn't even remember my my last name so how important was I so all these feelings kind of come up and throw you throw me back into oh if I could have said this or should I said that or should I have re reacted like this how should I have reacted so yeah it's interesting how that happens and um sometimes you know, we're complex, right? And we can easily go back into our self-destructive behavior because all that negativity, just all that, all that thinking, you could just be dumped, right? Just dump it. It's not even worth it. And still surviving the not being hateful, right? And always feeling like, okay, where am I? Am I hateful? Am I being hateful? I can be angry. I think it's important to be angry. You have to be angry a little bit. And then working that out and feeling that and not feeling bad about it. Yeah, I need to, I need to get angry. But then how do I work that anger into a positive, positive? How can I get that to working for me instead of against me? We don't eliminate our defects of character. Rather, we kind of just uh, accept that we have 
idiosyncrasies, right? And we grow more mindful and responsible for our conduct. So being able to push through and just, it could be little progresses, you know, it could be little things that we manage. I didn't stop, I didn't stop being myself. I still said hello and I was happy and I introduced them, the two ladies to my daughter and I said, okay, great, nice to see you, have a good day. They were quick about leaving too. One just kind of looked at me like, hmm, and the other one was just oblivious. So, because I, I don't want to stop being who I am. I never want that to stop, if that makes any sense. I don't want to cower to any of their beha behavior that is irresponsible to humankind. Any human would not, that is not, we are all equal. End of story, we are all equal. No matter what religion, no matter what belief systems that we hold, no matter what color we are, what education, what amount of what amount of education we had or didn't have, we are all equal. We're on the equal plane. And it's important to treat people the way you want to be treated. And I wouldn't change, and I'm not going to. So I hope that makes sense. I know sometime, I, tomorrow, I promise, I'll pre-read and then I'll write down my notes. I like feeling the feelings as they come up and then you can see the reaction. And I like to see the reaction as well because I get to see where I need to improve in my growth or let's say how to, you're gonna pull the information that you need out of it. This is what information that I pulled as I was reading it for me. And these are the feelings that are coming up because of what I saw yesterday. We had a good day yesterday. Went to the Irvine Spectrum, like I said, and the girls got their, some clothes and we got to walk around and I got to do some studying, um, learning about different things that I wasn't learning. It was just a little bit, it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. Yes. And dealing with those uncomfortable feelings and just not letting them soak into me so deeply that I can't get, I can't, I'm, I feel like I'm sinking. No, I don't want to do that. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this. So hopefully you get your book and you can follow along with me. I still have a few more days till the end of October and I apologize for the noise. I hope this helps you on your healing journey. Follow your bliss and be good humans.